Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is our BPAL Picks NFL Picks of the Week video for the first week of the NFL playoffs. We are rocking and socking and pounding into the playoffs now. And I am B, a.k.a. Joe Boric, joined by Pal, a.k.a. Steve Duncan, or Pierlo Wisdom. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. Uh, hockey season's starting up right away. we got playoffs and football. I mean, this. This is a great time of this year, not normally the best time of the year, but it's the best time of the year this year. <laughs> correct, correct. I agree with that. I completely agree with that. So let's just get right into it. Uh, we have six games uh, this weekend, and it starts with the Buffalo Bills against the Indianapolis Colts. I'm pretty sure um, from what I've heard uh, Cuomo, the governor of New York, has cleared fans for the Bills for their playoff game. So I think that will have more of a factor in home field advantage when they already have been a superb home team without the fans there already at 7-1 and one on the season. So personally, myself, since Josh Allen, getting Stefan Diggs was a godsend for the Bills because being able to use Josh Allen's deep ball and cannon of an arm has really expanded their offense. And I think that's just going to be combined with Devin Singletary, their back, who's just getting better each game. Going to be too much for the Colts, who run a little bit more of a conservative, a fun-to-watch game at times, but more of a defensive, not-as-flashy offensive game. Um, but I got to put it out to them. They had a good season. I applaud them for their season, and I really like Frank Wright as a head coach, and I think he got the most out of his players. As same with Sean McDermott. These are two of the best, some of the best coaches. But I think this one's going to go to the Bills. That's why they got the two wins on the Colts. They're just a bit stronger than the Colts. And also have a very good defense, just a little bit below the Colts defense in statistics. So I'm going to go with the Bills on this one. Josh Allen's going to continue to show he's a top five MVP level guy, as well as Stephon Diggs. Both of those guys should finish top five in the MVP. Yeah, I, I well, I'm definitely going to go with the Bills. I mean, Allen's just playing insane. He's he's broke he's broke Bills records all th this year, all over the place. And uh, I mean, I love Rivers. I, I, he's a heart. You know, that you kind of root for the Colts because they're a lunch bucket team, right? Like they get everything from greasy hard work, uh, good defense, solid defense, and all that. You want it's it's hard not to root for them. I'm not sure the Bills will cover the spread here. I'm really off on that. I think they will. I think they will. I got six and a half. What do you got? Same thing? I have six on mine, but I think they will get close to it. Um, I think, uh, obviously, you could bet the you should bet the Bills here to win. I think betting the spread is more, for me, a 50-50 shot in this game that will leave up to your interpretation. Yeah. Um, that's the way I would look at it. And because of these offenses um, combined with the defenses, I would say, since I've been getting nipped in the butt with unders recently, I would think this game probably has a better chance to go over just because these offenses do try to get the ball down the field when able. So as long as it's not – and I heavily snowing in Buffalo tomorrow. I don't, I could see this definitely being a pretty good uh, game. And that's the offense. other thing is the cold weather too, right? So, I mean, it could be an under because of that as well. I don't really like the total on this at all, to tell you the honest truth. It could be anything. I'm probably taking the bills and using them in a parlay rather than, you know, taking them ML on 133. I mean, it doesn't, it's not that sure yeah. of a bet. I would rather take, I'd rather put them in a parlay or something like that. That's a good idea, yeah. We could put the Bills in a parlay. This one uh, should be fairly easy just because the the Rams have been a very average team in their last five games round out the season at 3-2, and two, where Seattle did the exact opposite and only won, or lost, excuse me, one game in their uh, last five and really has looked better. I think this one's going to go to Seattle due to the simple fact, too. If Goff is playing, he's going to be playing with a messed up thumb. And if he's not playing, then that's a huge disadvantage. So uh, I believe that this game is going to go to Seattle. It's also in Seattle, which even without their fans, still has proven to be the Seattle trap house of the of just completely demolishing teams when they're in their house. So.
I would say take Seattle. This one, I think they will. The spread's only three and a half I have. So personally, I think they will cover that. And I personally also believe, I think, um, this game, because of their off Seattle's offense and the fact that I don't think if Goff's injured, he hasn't looked as good getting the Rams offense moving before his injury in recent weeks. And that Wofford's just a younger and experienced cat. I feel like that game could go over 42.5 because that's a pretty low under. And I think the – or pretty low total, excuse me. I think the only reason it's like that, though, is because the Rams have the best defense. The problem is what's killer to your defense? Not keeping possession of the ball on offense. And I don't think the Rams with Goff's injury or with Wofford in are going to have the best possession numbers. That's why I feel this game is a good chance to be over also. Uh, I'm – if Goff's not in, I'm definitely going for Seattle and, and give me the points for sure. But I, I watched that game when he hurt his thumb. I was watching that game. I was like, it's amazing he finished that game. Like, I didn't realize. I thought he just hurt his thumb. I didn't realize it was that buggered up. Like, he really buggered it up. So, um, it's so tough here yeah, because of the defense. Uh, Seattle has been playing so much better defensively in the second half, too. That's the other thing. Like, they've been really playing. It was like night and day almost. And that's the reason why yeah. they turn things around quite a bit. Well, the big thing, too, is the Rams are a team that typically like to mix up their offense with running and passing to open up their offense with play action and so on and so forth. The best asset of Seattle's defense is rushing. So that's why I feel like that's not going to benefit the Rams either. No, I don't. But I, I, I kind of wonder about the over there. They're, I think this, I, I think the Rams could end up having their offense not really contribute all that much with the Seahawks defense playing so well, especially if Goff is not in and healthy. Uh, I don't know if they would be able to get all that much, but there may be ten points, and then Seattle. Could I still... could see this like being like a third. Like let's put it like if the Rams don't get that, like a thirty to fourteen ish yeah. score, and then That's you what would I'm be above. Then you would be it's, above the forty-two point five. Yeah, I slightly lean the over, but I, I I can't say I'd want to bet it. But I do like see I do like the Hawks to cover for sure. Yeah. Now this one is a game we're not going to spend time on because I think we know who's going to win this next game. Yeah. Uh, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I do give a lot of credit, though. I must say to Juan Rivera with the Washington Football Team. He battled cancer this year, was able to bring them to at least seven and nine and get them into the playoffs in this downtrodden NFC East division. So uh, he got them through, and also with all the stuff that happened with his quarterbacks, they shouldn't have been the team to go seven and nine. With all the quarterback controversy they had this year with Haskins being a goofball. And then you had to have Smith come back from that major legs surgery he's going to be playing this weekend. It would be a great story if Alex Smith is able to beat Tom Brady. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just just, uh, don't necessarily uh, foresee that happening. But more power to Alex Smith for battling through this year. I think this game... I don't know if it's going to cover the spread just because of how scrappy Washington has been. They're so tough to pick with spreads because Washington keeps teams so close, even in losing efforts. But I do think this game with Alex Smith back um, will go over and Tampa Bay will win because I think both teams will score around the 14 to 21 ish. Uh, the, the losing team will score 14 to 21 ish, excuse me, and then the other team will have at least that like 28 to 35 um, mark there. So I feel like this game will go over and the Bucks will win. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad combination. Instead of working the spread, just take the extra quarter on Bucks winning ML and then throwing in the over on top of it. And then you're getting pretty good juice on that. Yeah, I, yeah, I like that too. Just because, yeah, they, Washington's been such a scrappy, well-coached team all year that, uh, on the other hand, I could see the Bucks just ripping them apart, too, because the last couple of games they played, they were just rolling. They looked like uh, a team that was on all cylinders. So I could see them blowing them out, but I don't want to – I'm going to give credit to Washington for how well they played everybody this year. 
uh, and say that they'll likely keep that up, and I don't like it. Anything, I mean, and I don't, but I don't like taking Washington and giving them the points either because the Bucks played so well the last two or three games that they could just keep on doing it. They were they were beating everybody up. They, lo- they looked really, really good. Yeah, it's just Washington is tough to pick with the spread because even in losing efforts, they tend to be one of the teams in the NFC East that have played pretty close yeah. Uh, yeah. games in losing yeah. efforts. Uh, but now our next game is the first game of Sunday, which will be Lamar Jackson's Ravens against Ryan Tannehill, really Derrick Henry's um, Tennessee Titans. Yeah. I think um, this game's going to come down to the Ravens have a good two sides of the equation where the Titans don't. Their defense was much better last year than this year. It really took a nosedive. Is ranked 28th, 29th. The highest ranking it has is in rushing yards, which is still 19th or 20th in the league. So their defense, I think, with J.K. Dobbins, how well he's been playing in the final weeks of the season. And also, by the way, doesn't have any fumbles this year. He's one of the backs to not have uh, any fumbles. Uh, And then Derrick Henry's a beast. I think you're going to see a great matchup of running back in this game. So I feel like because of the issues on the Titans' defense, somewhat because of injury and also guys that played well last year not stepping up again, that's going to be what costs them this game because the Ravens just have the combination effort of being able to use Dobbins if Lamar's a little bit off or being able to run Lamar more and then use him in pass options more to get the Tennessee defense off if they're not running the ball out of the backfield more successfully. I think they just have a lot more creative options uh, with the Baltimore Ravens than the Tennessee Titans do with their team. I do have to say, though, hats off to Derrick Henry. He should be top two in the MVP potentially. Uh, voting oh, yeah. with how well that guy did. And then Tannehill had much more than just a game manager season this year with 33 and 7. But I think their run's going to end tomorrow, but uh, or Sunday, excuse me. Uh, but Vrabel's a heck of a coach. But uh, they'll move on. They'll get a better defense and try to um, build on that, I think, next year and get better and bigger in uh, Tennessee. But I think the Ravens are going to take this one. And I think they'll probably take it by three and a half, too, because of what I just said about Tennessee's defense. They're ranked uh, pretty low amongst uh, the league. Because of the Ravens' defense, though, I don't think this will go over 54 and a half. That's a pretty high total. Yeah, I like the under in this game for that reason. Uh, Because of the Ravens' defense... Um, I don't know why I'm feeling the Titans here. Call me crazy, but if I think I would, I I, I don't. I, I it's just one. You know, sometimes you just have a gut feeling. I just have a gut feeling for some reason the Titans are going to take this, uh, I, and I couldn't give you a logical reason why, except for you know Henry does great things, but the Ravens are pretty good against the run, so uh, it's just a gut feeling. I'll give yeah. you that. This Capper's ranch from Capper's comparison there. I'm taking that, and my reasons are that it's voodoo. It's voodoo, that's the reasons. Yeah, I just feel like this is also going to be, they're going to be able to get it done because Lamar has had two times to show himself in the playoffs, and he hasn't been able to get it done yet. I think he'll go by the old cliche, the third time's the charm, and be able to finally get them over the hump here this third time through uh, in his uh, playoff try here. I, now, like, the Bears, I, I like that so 255 for the Titans. I think that's a pretty good juice for an ML on what could very, be a very yeah, good game. I, like, I, I like just that. feel like the Ravens, I wouldn't bet it because I just feel the Ravens are going to win. But, yeah, this is one, pick which one of us you want to agree with and yeah. uh, roll with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this next one is interesting. Uh, the Saints obviously have the far superior team, but you got the Saints against the Bears, who all of a sudden started playing better at the end of the season, as well as all of a sudden Mitch Trubinsky looked like a pretty, at least, decent uh, NFL quarterback rather than someone that everyone complains about every five seconds. Uh, and he finished with 16 and 8. So that's not a bad overall season. You doubled your touchdowns, interceptions, um, and 2,055 yards. Um, so I 
think uh, this game might be closer than a lot of people entail. I don't think it's going to cover the nine and a half spread. I do, however, think since it's in New Orleans, the Saints are the far superior team. Drew's back. So Tyson Hill is being used in all the different ways he gets used. They'll be able to use their offense more creatively and their pounding defense will be able to um, stop uh, the Bears who have they have top 10 rankings and everything where the Bears have a pretty solid defense, but it's more in the 11, 12 teen rankings. So I think the fact that the Saints have that top notch offense combined with that top notch defense is going to be able to stifle the Bears in this game when the Bears more just have that above average defense and then below average offense. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, do, I, I like the Bears to cover the spread. That, that's for sure. I, I don't think they're going to win, but I don't think they're going to be blown out either. By nine uh, and a half. So either. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got ten. So if wherever you can find it, but yeah, if you can find the ten, take that. And uh, what about the under on that? Forty-seven seems high for any game that the Bears is it, are in, right? Um, I think. It will probably be under just because I feel like this might be one of the lower scoring uh, games of the the Bears like to try to really suffocate you at times. That's how they try to really get to you on their defense. Same with the Saints. So I feel like if they're both teams are able to be successful in that realm, uh, yeah, this will be one of the lower scoring games, which is why I think it will also be within that nine and a half. So, yeah, I think this will be under with the Saints getting most of the points with like the 24 or yeah. like five points, something like that. Yeah, I, I, think um, the, I think the Saints, because of uh, they don't need to worry so much about the Bears offense, will take a lot of field goals and just try to get rack up points any way they can. Yeah, yeah how I see it, because the Bears offense just recently started showing a little bit more, but it's still nothing close to the way right. New Orleans could perform. Now, this game, is, the last game, or Sunday night game, is filled with um, a series of unfortunate events. I actually thought this game had a chance, more so than the Titans, to be an upset, but now not so much because they're not going to have half of their coaching staff, unfortunately, for Cleveland. So it's going to be a huge shakeup of who's in your ear and all that stuff. During the game, you're going to have to get used to a couple of new personalities really quick. I think that really doesn't benefit the Browns. And for that reason, I'm changing my prediction in this game than what I had in my head. And I think the Steelers are going to win this game, but I still think it could be within that six-point margin, so I'm not necessarily comfortable saying they will cover the spread, but I also believe this game is going to be one of the more uh, pounding uh, defensive games, and this is a game you might see the Browns playing against the Steelers. Not so great defense, except for in rushing, step up more and kind of be able to focus on the passing a little bit more because the reason I say that is James Conner's a good back, but he's been banged up. He hasn't been his same old self for a couple of years now than he was when he first broke in. You don't have to worry about the run against the Steelers as much as you would have to worry about the run if you were playing someone like uh, Baltimore or someone like, obviously, Tennessee. So I think uh, that's why they can maybe hone in on Brothensburger more. And when he gets pressured, he doesn't grade that high anymore at this point of his career. So... That would be the way you could still beat them. <clears throat> but it's just going to be, they said it this week on a sports talk, I said, um, Baker Mayfield's really going to have to step up huge without his coach and really kind of take the mantle and be that, um, show his extra quality. He had a very good season this year and proved he's a first-round pick. It's just like a lot of people said, when you pick, you're just waiting to see – where he was picked in the draft, you feel like there's something extra, which you still haven't seen that extra sauce that you see in the Josh Allens of the world and all that yet in Baker. And if he's able to pull out this win after all this that happened to that coaching staff, that would be that extra sauce. But I think because of all that happening, I will slightly give it to the Steelers, but this is still close to a 50-50 game for me. Because this, I, I agree with everything you said, 
I just really love that juice at 325 for the Browns there. 325, that is way high. I just like the value of taking the Browns uh, on this game. Um, Coaching-wise, I wonder how much how much outside influence can you get if your coach can't be there? Like, can they talk to you outside, talk to the coaches that are in there in some other way with uh, media or something like that? Is that allowed? I never even knew that in the NFL. Are they allowed to do that? I like, well, like, they, they just they, have, they're just going to have their assistant coaches that someone's going to step up and be, I haven't really looked into who's going to be their uh interim head coach for the week but somebody probably one of the coordinators would become the uh head coach and then you have different guys kind of just step up into roles it's happened this year for other teams around the league uh when uh, people were out and it's happened um in other leagues as well they just have to have other coaches kind of substitute in for that time so i think that's all it'll be but I just feel because of all that, the, the I lean a little bit to the Steelers, but like I said, I, it's close. So this is I watched a lot of Steelers games this year because, of course, Steel, I did lives, and they have had trouble against the run sometimes. It's like they're, they're uh, when, they've, when they've lost, it's usually because they believe in huge gaps that we don't even understand why. You know what I mean? Like they shouldn't. They have the, the guys to be able to protect the run. But they haven't been. Yeah, the rushing yards lost. defense. Yeah, the rushing yards defense in the uh, back half of the season did take a dip because it was ranked a lot higher, uh, where everything else is fifth at the lowest, and everything else is uh, third for them. It moved down to tenth, which is still good overall, but it's kind of a mirage because if you look at their four losses, you're exactly right. Usually it's because of they started all of a sudden struggling with the Russian D. Yeah, uh, and but, I think the Browns are going to use their running game a lot against them. So, Yeah, for sure. With Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, you're definitely going to try to down the run there. But I believe we pretty much covered uh, these uh, games for you, these six lists of games here. This has been our BPAL Picks NFL Picks of the Week video for PAL, a.k.a. Pirlo Wisdom. Check out all of his stuff at Pirlo Wisdom's YouTube channel, and you can check me out at Sports Fanatic News YouTube channel. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. B. Peace out One and sec. have a great day. Get over to our Patreon on BPAL. Don't forget that. <laughs> we need that, man. That's too much fun over there. you got to go to BPAL Picks on our Patreon. Pal Pigs Patreon, and the link will be in the uh, description at the bottom here. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out, everybody.